CBS Sports. Over 50 years of unforgettable moments. spirit in St. Louis tonight. This historic city on the Mississippi River is the gateway to a national championship. 65 teams embarked upon a three-week march to the arch, and this evening it ends right here at the Edward Jones Dome, where the crowd anticipates this title showdown between the two top-ranked teams in college basketball. North Carolina, playing in its record 16th Final Four, seeks its fourth national championship, while Illinois hopes to cap its centennial season with an NCAA record 38th win and its first ever national title. And good evening, everyone. I'm Greg Gumbel. We welcome you to Prelude to a Championship as CBS Sports proudly presents its 24th consecutive NCAA Men's Basketball Championship. Our opening tip tonight is set for 921 Eastern Time and at the conclusion of the title game this coveted trophy will be presented to either North Carolina or Illinois. Joining me as always Clark Kellogg and Seth Davis of Sports Illustrated. The stage is set. It's the big actors who are meant to perform well tonight. And there are a lot of orange t-shirts in this dome tonight. That home court advantage will be more pronounced than even it was on Saturday night. And obviously the biggest player on the floor, Sean May, the 6'8 junior for North Carolina. He was magnificent against the Spartans, scoring 18 of his 22 points in the second half. In fact, two years ago, when North Carolina played Illinois, he had 23 points and 14 rebounds. He is really capable of scoring a lot of points, but he's also an excellent passer, and his ability to pass out of double teams tonight will be a huge factor as will his emotional leadership. The guy for Illinois that will be charged with dealing with Sean May primarily is James Augustine. He's double digit rebounded in four of the five tournament games he's played in. He's going to have to do that plus a job on the defensive end. The guy you're looking at there I simply call him worry and wrinkle free Williams. He is the maestro. He's the guy who makes Illinois go at both ends. When you talk about Williams you talk about a room service dime dropper. If you're open he'll get it to you in scoring position. If he can't find you he can go on his own and score. But where he really excels is at the defensive end. Happy feet and a strong body make him a tough guy to get around and beat off the dribble. And, and it'll be interesting to see who Darren Williams guards tonight. I think at the outside it will be Rashad McCants who has made 56 percent from behind the arc since missing the last four games of the regular season. When he is scoring uh, North Carolina is that much tougher to beat. And this guy has to have a good game for Illinois tonight. D Brown has been battling a stomach flu all week shot three for ten on Saturday. Illinois needs to make shots because North Carolina will have the advantage inside. The catalyst for North Carolina is Raymond Felton. He's got a rush hour handle. He's improved his perimeter shooting and he's a terrific passer but he'll face the stiffest challenge he's faced all year from these Illinois guards defensively. Let's face it guys as far as talent goes there isn't very much that separates Illinois from North Carolina. Coming up we'll hear from Carolina coach Roy Williams. We'll take you inside the Illinois locker room as coach Bruce Weber addresses his fighting Illini when prelude to a championship continues on CBS after this. CBS Sports presents Prelude to a Championship, sponsored by Victorin. Uh, 
Welcome back to St. Louis, everyone. Michael Jordan, the man who hit the game-winning shot to give North Carolina the national championship in 1982, arriving in Carolina Blue to cheer on his alma mater here this evening. North Carolina head coach Roy Williams is making his third trip to a championship game. He was 0 for 2 previously as Kansas head coach. Bonnie Bernstein spoke with Williams a short while ago. Obviously, Roy, every coach wants to win a championship, and I'm sure you want to get everybody off your back, but <laughs> In your 17 years of coaching, has actually winning the championship changed places at all on your priority list? Well, there's no question I have that, and I shouldn't use it this way, but I'll say desperate desire to win it, but it has changed. I mean, I, as you get older, you realize things are a little more important, and my goal now is to live long enough to be able to coach my grandchildren in Little League Baseball and Little League Basketball, because I'd really like to do that. We could talk matchups all day long, but really one of the things Illinois does better than anybody is ball movement with that motion offense. How do you go about countering that and trying to cut off their lanes tonight? Well, hopefully we can get out in the lanes. You almost answered it yourself that if you can get out in the passing lanes and make them do something else, it makes it a little easier to defend the post. And also, you're not running from behind every time. You're waiting until they catch it and then starting to play. So if you can get out in the lanes and uh, be the actor and let them react, you're a lot better off. Coach, thanks so much. Thanks, Bob. Words of a coach. Meanwhile, Illinois head coach Bruce Weber is making his first appearance in a championship game. Weber allowed us to listen in to his pregame speech just a short time ago. Have a hand, and you have five individual fingers. It is much more powerful if it becomes a fist. And tonight, you are the fist. You are the more, more powerful object than the hand. And that's, that's why you will be successful today, guys, if you play as a team. It's not about individual people, individual talent. It's about the team. That's why you have won. That's why you won all year. You are not only a, a, a together team, but you are one of the best teams <coughs> in the history of NCAA basketball. And that's how I expect you to play tonight. Our thanks to Coach Weber for allowing us to listen in on his talk. There are the two head coaches. This is the who and why part of the show. Who's going to win and why? Well, I like Illinois simply because I think they can win the perimeter matchup and they'll compete inside. Sean May is a terrific low post score, but I think the Illinois front court will rise up to the challenge and play even inside in the back court to win the game for him. I like Illinois. Well, I like North Carolina because of their inside play. Not just Sean May, but Marvin Williams, the freshman, I think is going to score a lot inside. And I love the way that North Carolina turned it on in the second half against Michigan State. They put two halves together like that tonight. They will not only win, they could win comfortably. Seth says Carolina. Illinois. Clark says Illinois. Prelude to a championship will continue here on CBS in just a moment. Sports presents Prelude to a Championship, sponsored by the first ever G6 from Pontiac, official performance machines of the NCAA. As we welcome you back to St. Louis, noteworthy indeed, our CBS Sports colleagues Jim Nance and Billy Packer are set to call their 15th consecutive national championship game. It's a pleasure to call on them. Jim and Billy, take it away. All right, thank you, Greg. Hello, Billy. Hi, James. And hello, friends. And we have been clamoring for this game, as have most college basketball fans, for months. Number one against number two, and it's been a long time since we had a matchup like this, Billy. And you're familiar with the last time because that was your first championship call back Absolutely. in Absolutely. Coach Wooden's last game where he beat Kentucky. Hard to believe it's been that long. Well, Billy, let's go through all the major points of this game, what you are looking for, and we begin with the Tar Heels. Well, what you've got to look for is a man that's almost indispensable for North Carolina. Raymond Felton not only pushing the ball up the floor, he has got to stay on the floor and out of foul trouble so he can't get in trouble on the defensive end. Rashad McCants, he is a guy that can step up huge in big games. I think Williams will be on him early in the ball game. Could be the difference maker. And inside, you've got college basketball's toughest man to handle in the lone post. John May, he's the kind of guy who can cause huge problems for Illinois. And look, they fight in the line eye, taking the floor here in St. Louis. Let's go through the Pontiac game changer, Billy. Well, North Carolina loves to use May on the outside, but it's a little bit of a decoy because they're going to move the ball around a little bit and set a screen for him. There you get the exchange. The ball is rotated. 
May hits, and then he can either go over the top, depending on where the defensive man is, and go on the ball side with a cut, or he can go back door and get the lob. And there he is with the lob. Impossible to handle it. All right, Billy, let's take everybody through the uh, Illinois team. What to look for tonight? Well, on the inside, a lot's going to be asked tonight in regard to James Augustine and Roger Powell. They both have come up so big for this team that's known what they do on the perimeter. But it was Powell against Louisville that was the man of the hour. That when you talk about Illinois all year long, I don't think I have ever seen three men on the perimeter play so well together as a unit. You're talking about it, Williams and Head, and, and of course, D. Brown, the man with all the quickness. A very difficult matchup. Billy, here comes North Carolina the Tar Heels, who last played in the championship game back in 93 in New Orleans and won it. Let's go through the Illini team, and team is what you talk about every time you discuss them. Oh, absolutely. Here you'll see Augustine setting the screen. Head will come over the top. He's so good on this curl because he can take it to the basket and score. He is a finisher. He brings the defense over to him. Two men come, and here's Powell stepping out for the little jump shot. This team could pass the ball, and they're extremely unselfish. All right, just minutes from tip here. Illinois going for its first ever national championship. Taking on North Carolina, and it's coming up on CBS. CBS Sports exclusive coverage of the men's national championship game is sponsored by the new singular Coca-Cola, Chevy, and by State Farm. Chevys are back. Six cars, 1,926 horsepower. Chevy, an American revolution. You make sure your children are safe in the car. safe on their bikes, and safe at night. But what about their financial futures? The strength of the AIG companies means we'll be there for you. Insurance, loans, retirement. AIG. Down to the championship with CBS Sports and Coca Cola. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Edward Jones Dome in St. Louis, Missouri, for tonight's national championship game between the University of North Carolina Tar Heels and the University of Illinois Fighting Illini. Let's meet tonight's starting lineups. At forward for North Carolina, a 6'9 senior from Cleveland, Ohio, number 21, Jawan Williams. At forward for Illinois, a 6'6 senior from Joliet, Illinois, number 43, Roger Powell, Jr. 
at forward for North Carolina, a 6'4 junior from Asheville, North Carolina, number 32, Rashad McCants. At forward for Illinois, a 6'10 junior from Mokina, Illinois, number 40, James Augustine. At center for North Carolina, a 6'9 junior from Bloomington, Indiana, number 42, Sean May. At guard for Illinois, a 6'3 senior from Chicago, Illinois, number four, Luther Head. At guard for North Carolina, a 6'5 senior from West Palm Beach, Florida, number five, Jackie Manuel. At guard for Illinois, a 6'3 junior from the Colony, Texas, number five, Darren Williams. At guard for North Carolina, a 6'1 junior from Atlanta, South Carolina, number two, Raymond Felton. At guard for Illinois, a six-foot junior from Maywood, Illinois, number 11, D. Brown. The head coach for North Carolina is Roy Williams. And the head coach for Illinois is Bruce Weber. Isn't it something both coaches in only their second seasons with these programs? And Billy Packer, let's go one time through your final analysis before tip. Well, we're going to talk about the Tar Heel Williams combo. That's Duad and Marvin Williams. They could present real problems matching up if they're ever on the floor at the same time, and certainly they're interchangeable. So a little advantage to North Carolina there. Illinois turn off, and I'm talking about Deron Williams. He has been unbelievable in defense throughout the course of this year, but particularly in this tournament. I'm so anxious to see if he takes McCants or does he go on Felton because he is a stopper. The monster in the middle, we're talking about Sean May without question. He is the leading scorer in this tournament so far. Such a tough matchup, and Illinois would be in serious trouble if May's touching the ball often early in this ballgame. And the three rules, without question, the best perimeter club we've seen in a long time is Illinois. But take a look at this three-point percentage. Very, very even. Our game is brought to you in HDTV by the Harris Corporation, the world leader in broadcast systems for high-definition television. Ed Corbett, John Cal, Vern Harris, the officials, getting the distinction of this assignment tonight. Well, Billy, you go back to when it all started with practice in October, games in November, it's all down to this one. And D. Brown and Illinois will have first possession. And here it is, D. Brown to Kants, Felton on Williams, Manuel on head. McCants all over Brown, out high they go to Powell, who started on Saturday in that second half, as did Luther Head with the ball right now. And normally, whoever Manuel guards is the coach that says, I respect Head the most of these scores. Williams with the jumper, and just as he did against Louisville on Saturday at the first basket of the game. And it's going to be Brown on Felt. So that means it's Williams McCants. Fans early watch this matchup. And there you can see Head is laying off Manuel, so he's almost double teaming May inside. Here comes the double. Carolina works it around the pants. Back of the rim with a three. Jawad pulls it back out. Carolina will restart. And you can see they're going to double down from the weak side on May. Wide open. Too big for Powell. Yep, no question about that. Just out muscled them in the lane to match baskets. Very 
seldom with Ron Williams be, is he guarded by a smaller man. He is so powerful, I'm very surprised at, at this matchup because he will take Felton inside. He's clever with the ball. That upper body strength will give Felton serious problems. So the foul on Felton and Williams to inbound. I think they'll have to make a change in that defensive assignment. Williams again, this a three. Down and out, Manuel comes in for the board. Doesn't get the ball to Felton, Manuel brings it up. One of the things Illinois does extremely well is get back on defense. Open man, McCants. Thought about it, now will take it, three. This time, oh, oh, yes. Great touch and a tremendous follow through on that shot. That one looked like it wanted to just kind of pop out, but it settled in for the three. Oh, you're right, Jim. The guy with the great follow through will get that bounce. Follow up shot, Augustine off the power miss, and Carolina's running. Breaking ahead is McCants. Good finisher. And he scores. McCants is an excellent finisher, and Felton knows how to pass. Jim, these two teams have played against each other in the last two years, both winning a game. Brown played great one year and terrible the next, and the same with Felton. Howell with a hook shot. Rolls off the rim. Carolina's breaking again. Felton takes middle. Challenges Augustine, and he'll head to the line. Felton using the screener there, and Augustine didn't have much chance. North Carolina, a program that's been to the Final Four at least once in the last seven decades, going through Oakland University, Iowa State, Villanova by one, Wisconsin, Michigan State, Big Ten victims the last two outings, and another Big Ten opponent today. Felton at the line to shoot a pair. Jim, as a freshman against Illinois, Felton played 38 minutes. He had nine points, and he had eight turnovers. Brown got the best of him with four steals in that game. That was reversed completely last year when D. Brown went three for 17, only had eight points, and it was North Carolina that won. So they're very familiar with each other, having played most of these same players played in both of those games. You saw Carolina trade out Williams, Jawad out, Marvin in. So a nine-point run for the highest-scoring team in the land. 9-2, Tar Heels early. With Ron Williams, you want to take Felton some more. See if he can pick up that second foul on him early in this ball game. Head driving, and they wave off the basket. He traveled first. Manuel, with those long arms, plays about 6'7". So Head's got his hands full there. Manuel, the all-defensive player from the ACC. And here's the road to the championship through Fairleigh Dickinson, Nevada, Wisconsin, Milwaukee, Arizona, and Louisville. And let's stress road, not air. All bus rides to their sites, including right here, two-hour and 45-minute drive from their campus. And that's Dean Brown with the hand check. Foolish foul by Brown. His job is just to stay in front of Felton. Don't worry about stealing the ball and certainly stay out of foul trouble. And you talked about Marvin Williams coming into Gerard Williams. That's an interchangeable piece for North Carolina. No fall off there, even though Gerard has more experience. Your steal, Luther Head had his hands in there. Carolina gets it back. Ingram's going to have problems here. Yep, Ingram has checked in to see if he can stop May. They feed Manuel, had a good look, missed with the left hand. D. Brown going to the far corner looking for the jump shot. Here he comes. Gives it over to Ingram instead. Good scouting report. Williams respecting his jump shot. D. Brown with the three. Oh, and it's a long one. Pants. Underneath, it's Carolina, Marvin Williams, Tar Heel ball. That was a good job by Head because had Mar Marvin Williams got that ball, Jimmy had an easy layup. You're going to see McCants, rather than trying to put the ball on Williams, shoot a lot of standstill jumpers and use that height advantage that he has, try to go over. But look at him take that ball. Yeah, that's Williams forcing the tie up. The arrow remains in the Carolina corner. Williams so strong in that upper body. He looks like he's slow, but he moves his feet, and he has great ability to anticipate the movement of the player he's guarding. Everything he does, he does with tremendous smoothness. And there's a foul on Williams. Interesting, posting up on Williams inside. He's using the out on the perimeter. Billy, what's so fascinating about this matchup is what triggered it all. With Roy Williams at Kansas, Bill Self at Illinois, Matt Doherty at North Carolina, and once Williams, after the championship game lost to Syracuse, moved over 
to Chapel Hill. Well, Bruce Weber in the mix after Self went to Kansas. He became the Illinois coach. Self, in short, would not be the Illinois coach. If Roy Williams had never left Kansas. Well, all three pretty successful. Great hands. That's Felt putting it up. And long rebound to Williams. Up ahead to D. Brown. What do you say? Not going to stop him. I tell you, you get him out on the run, Felton's quick, but he's not faster than Brown. Felton may be quicker with the ball, but Brown's faster with the feet. And another takeaway for Illinois. Luther Head, this for the lead. Ingram crashes the boards, puts it up and in for the tie. Ingram has been so valuable coming off the bench. He and Smith gave a big lift to Illinois against Louisville in the first half. That's a seven-point run for Illinois. There's that weak side help. Not bad. That Darren Williams on the baseline. You will not be able to lob that ball inside because weak side help is coming for Illinois. Ball to Carolina out of the break. Jim Nance and Billy Packer here in St. Louis and you know Roy Williams I mentioned in his second year with the program as head coach of course his history is a, is a long and deep history 72 graduate 73 master's degree and a 10 year assistant to Dean Smith coming back to Chapel Hill just his second season and interesting to note Billy how these two coaches really have made it to the title game with players who were recruited by the predecessors that is certainly true. Matt Doherty and his staff, the bulk of this North Carolina team, aside from Marvin Williams. Defensive change adjustment right now. Head is on McCants. Rod Williams back out, Felton. Here's a three. Brown was lucky on that particular play. He let Felton go, and Felton, pretty good outside shooter, shoots in the mid 40s. Head wide open. Bad mistake, North Carolina. Rod Williams thought he had it. But it's Powell muscling, tipped out, and a foul is going to be called here. Called on pa North Carolina. Powell jumping over, through, and tougher than two North Carolina players who have about three inches apiece on him. Just would not be denied for that rebound. Had that whatever it takes attitude in the second half on Saturday. That was on Marvin Williams, his first. And look out, this one got away from him. Brown, Not when D. Uh, Brown's chasing. Right. Brown, like unlike any other player in the court, just runs it down. We call him the one-man fast break. He is something else, lightning fast. And nobody in the low post except when a guy breaks in like Powell is right now. Again, not getting to Luther Head. North Carolina going way behind. Not even a good screen that time. Just head went out beyond the perimeter. That is now 10 unanswered for the fight in the line eye. Luther Head getting a lot of good looks. Good looks because of faulty defense by North Carolina. Very lackadaisical. And that's Jawad Williams matching the three at the other end. Picking up right where he left off. What a game he had Saturday, Billy, against Michigan State. And we talked about those other games these two teams have played. He had 15 and 8 and 18 and 12 in the two games he's played in his career against Illinois. Jawad had 20 points in 23 minutes against the Spartans. A huge first half. And after having a miserable tournament up to that point. He he down. He's already hit one, not this time. David Noel has checked in for the Tar Heels and he comes away with it. Good job by Illinois getting back on missed shots so that North Carolina can't get that patented break going. So with May on the bench, McCann, jumper. Ball on the floor and again it's Powell. But he gave it up to McCants. Good job by McCants to stay with it instead of going back down court and turning his head. 14-12 North Carolina. North Carolina has given Illinois guards much, much too much room. And with their ability to pass and shoot outside, that presents a problem. Darren Williams driving. Tough shot, and he was fouled. And the act. 
That's two on Felton, and I thought that matchup for Felton could get him in problems against the bigger Williams. Too early on Felton. He's asking Coach Williams to stay in the game. They're going to have to make a change on that defense assignment. They already had Melvin Scott at the scorer's table about to check in. And a reminder, you can get official NCAA championship gear plus streaming video highlights of every tournament game. Just go to CBSSportsLine.com. And that one-point win over Villanova, Jim, you'll remember, Felton fouled out of that ball game. It is the one position that North Carolina really doesn't have a replacement. He wants to stay in the game. but and he gonna, is. Yeah, but they're going to have to change the assignment because Williams just too big for it. Well, you mentioned the Villanova game where he fouled out, and uh, the Tar Heels held on. Don't forget also that Felton missed the season opener where they were shocked by Santa Clara. He is critical in May. Beats him down the floor. And that was a good job by Williams realizing, I'm not going to stop that big guy, so don't pick up a cheap foul. May, as we know, improved himself so much from a stamina standpoint, really gets up and down the floor. Augustine misses the shot. North Carolina creating numbers here. Well, it's three on three, so Felton takes the pull-up jumper, and it'll be Illinois ball. Illinois has brought in Rich McBride. And Felton Ex feed it. Right, excellent hit ahead, but that's what makes that play is you've got a big guy that's willing to run the court. Sean May giving himself a birthday present. Today that's is right. the young man's birthday. 21. Quentin Thomas has checked in. Felton sits, Billy. Right. Underneath they go. Melvin Scott trying to get a hand in there. Nice reverse pass. Head open. And look at Powell again <laughs> with the body able to take it away from Jawad Williams. He sure did. He just out muscled him on the inside. Tough shot. Fade away. Doesn't go. And Darren Williams pulls it down for Illinois. North Carolina not attacking the basket very well for offensive rebounds. Headed on drive. Thomas, the freshman from Oakland, and California, loses it right to Luther Head. No place to go for the freshman, and this is where North Carolina gets in trouble when Felton has to sit. But he's got two fouls, and Roy Williams doesn't want to get him back in there yet. See McCants about to come in. Look at Powell outside. Three. Yes. Oh, right where he left off. <laughs> we saw, talked the other day about how infrequent it is. He hits the three, and he knocked one down, then missed another and followed it up with a dunk. May bullies his way gets the basket. Powell tried to draw the charge. Well, look at Williams. He knows he can take the freshman and does. They wave off the basket. Foul first on Quentin Thomas of Carolina. No look. basket. Williams is so smart. Here we see the dunk by May. Well, it's been a magical week in St. Louis, and what a splendid march to the arch it has been, this NCAA tournament. Our views of this gracious host city, courtesy of Monster. Today's the day. You know, Rick Pitino in Louisville went out on Saturday's semifinal game, as did Tom Izzo's Michigan State punch. Rick Pitino talked about it in Olympic medal terms, talked about his team ending up with a bronze medal. Tonight, of course, they go for the gold here in the first U.S. city to ever host the Olympic Games back in 1904. Going back to Illinois here, and the Illini has brought in Warren Carter, number 41. Jim, I thought that ball might have touched Carter's hands after it hit Noah. Rep didn't see it that way, and here's the matchups. Well on Carter, Scott now on Williams. Think we've seen the last of Felton in this half? Uh, I, I would be surprised if he comes back in if North Carolina stays close. But obviously, Roy Williams, will, that'll be dictated by the score of the game. Nice pick and roll. And they converge on Augustine and draw the charge. Heads up play by the senior, Melvin Scott. It really was, Jim, because he had no chance to block the shot or reach and just stayed in there. And that's going to bring Engelman. Augustine has to go out. Billy, I don't mean to be a pest, but just to remind everyone for one last time, Locust. There is a buzz about this coming Sunday, April 24th on CBS. At least that's what the card says. Jim, I think right now North Carolina better be careful with Scott back here on Brown. They might have to set some screens so that they just get the ball over half court. Pass. Nice dish. A good dish to Manuel, unable to finish. And Illinois comes out quickly. Williams will take the three. Surprising. Yep, Scott able to anticipate the board. Look at that defensive recovery by North by, by Illinois. Tough to break against this team. 
Double team on McCants. And that's touched out by Powell with 23 on the shot clock. I tell you, when you play against Illinois, particularly against Williams, you cannot reach for the ball. You've got to go two hands and use your body as well because his upper body strength will take it away from you. North Carolina very fortunate there because that was a turnover that was going the other way for an Illinois basket. The can't post it up in, on Williams. We worked it back over to May's side. Ingram reach in. You know, Billy, this was a big, big issue going into this game. How would Illinois defend Sean May? And what you've seen to this point, what do you think? As well, Belton is coming back in. Well, I think that they would be better off re not reach and use that double team trapping from the weak side because uh, when you reach, May is so strong and so wide, you're going to pick up that cheap foul. In bound pass to Marvin Williams. Really break down defensively by Powell on that play. Now you've got Carter in the game, very inexperienced. North Carolina, how about this? They go to their point zone to try to save Felton. So and rather than playing man-to-man -man defense, they go point zone. A good way to protect Felton would be up on the top. Not a position where you'd pick up fouls. Again, no trapping here, no doubling. Too late to get there. May, his first miss after knocking down his first three shots. Nice block out by Carter. Where was Marvin Williams on that rebound? Here you see this zone defense now. Felton's up on top. Head's not in the ball game. He's on the sideline, so that takes away their primary outside shooter. Aaron Williams with 12 on the shot clock. Kicks it back over. Deep Brown. Matthew Manuel closes in. Now they must hurry with six. Work it around, Carter. Not the one they want to shoot. Oh, Ingram. Ingram. Ingram crashes in, tipped back out, and McCants tries to save it, and they grant him the timeout. They grant him the aerial timeout. Good job going for the loose ball on McCants' part. McCants makes the play. Tar Heel ball, three-point lead. Stands out to you, Billy. Well, obviously, field goal shooting percentage for North Carolina. And there you have rebounding about even, but points in the paint. But I don't even think that North Carolina, with Augustine having two fouls on him, have gone into May as much as we're going to expect to see the rest of the way in this second half. Because Ingram is going to have his hands full. And now it's going to be Powell on May. Ingram on Williams. Powell has played tough and strong, but he's given up a lot of size to be inside on May. Manuel lost his footing, fortunate to get it back. Snaps it over. Here's the shot for three. Yes, Felton. Boy, that was fortunate for Manuel that he's about six foot six to be able to see cross court. Surprisingly, they come back out in, and they stay in that zone. I thought for a second Felton had me faked out. <laughs> I thought he was picking up Williams. I'm saying, I can't believe Roy Williams has made a nice move going to the zone would ever allow Felton with two fouls on him to match up against Williams in this half. Last seven points to the Tar Heels. Luther Head. It helps to have that man in there. Ingram is doing the job on the boards. Will they call that on Jack Emanuel? Yep. And Ingram now showing that he's really going to be able to step up here and do a nice job, not only shooting from the outside, for the, the situation where Augustine finds himself out. Now Smith comes in. Nick Smith, the senior, who's already graduated with a finance degree. In fact, will get a master's degree this May. And Ingram, with some uh, hard work, good work, goes to the bench with four rebounds. And Williams gets it back. Tries to set up Luther Head. Just snap it around with those guards. All first team big tenors. And Powell, not this time on the three, off the hand of Manuel of North Carolina. Got the under eight timeout. They've had a series of runs. Carolina now up six. And a look at the Coca Cola tournament summary. Fourth time, Billy Packers in 79. The two number one seeds meet in the championship game, the first since 1999, when Duke and UConn were both ones and met in a thrilling final. And that was a game in which Duke came in with 37 wins. And like all the other teams that have come into this championship with 37 wins, they were not able to come away with the championship. Illinois trying to snap that tonight. Right. 
give them the record for most wins in one season in the history of college basketball. Extra pass gives Head a wide open look. Yep. Nice job. Couldn't work it around any better than that for the three. And with Head back in the ball game now, they surround that zone with three outstanding perimeter shooters. Nick Smith now will take a shot at May. That broke a four-minute scoring drought for the line. I May goes uh, around Smith. Nice double pump. Smith started actually in the game that was played against these two teams last year. He had a terrible game. He was 0 for 7, did not score. Now we know he's used primarily as a backup. And actually the second backup big man. Here's where this team is so good on the perimeter. They're patient the way they throw that ball around. Ball got away. Pass was a little wide for Powell. No numbers. McCann's aware of that. He pulls back. Carolina's first five on the floor, and that's tipped out. Last touch by the Tar Heels. Near the end of every tournament game, we select a Chevrolet player of the game from each team to honor their determination and outstanding play. And Chevrolet will make a $1,000 contribution to each university's general scholarship fund, the American Revolution. Chevy. Jim, that was a sloppy pass going on the inside. May showed that he has too much quickness for Smith. North Carolina lost a good opportunity to score there. Ingram back on the floor. Williams fires it. And Jawad Williams for Carolina pulls it away. And if you're Illinois right now, try to draw a charge on Felton. Try to pick up the foul on the offensive end because the zone is saving him on the defensive end from picking up that third foul. Hold by Williams. Ooh, some Illinois fans were signaling traveling, but nothing doing there as the foul is called on Williams. That's his second. And here's Marvin Williams for North Carolina as May goes to the bench. I keep waiting for Marvin Williams to put up some of those numbers like we saw in the first two rounds, Billy, when he really starred in uh, wins against Oakland and Iowa State. And McCann's pass is picked off. Out to head, three-point shot. And missed opportunity there, the three-on-one. I don't know what Head was waiting for, because Williams got there in time to stop the shot. McCants, that was a three-try. That's a push on the inside. I think that's going to be on Manuel. Both teams, bad shot selection the last two times down the floor. And Jim, when you start talking about foul situations, both of these teams shoot the same percentage. But North Carolina is a team that is unbelievable. They, they shot... 202 more free throws than did their opponents. Illinois, on the other hand, with their perimeter shooting, only shot 46 more fouls than their opponents. So you can see who gets to that line much more often. Of course, Illinois, that perimeter team, and that's the real heart of their team. The Brown, Williams, and Head trio. Each team now with six team fouls. That was the second on manual a moment ago. The line eye in a cold spell here, having missed nine of its last ten. Ingram. Takes the three, top of the key, and that's an unexpected little bonus. Well, he really can do that, as we all talk about the big shots he made against Wisconsin. And now you have Marvin Williams on the inside trying to take him and does. Yeah, there you go, Marvin Williams with his first two. And only two in 23 minutes of action against Michigan State. Well, he was one for 12 the last two ball games. Very unlike him. On the baseline, ball squirts out. It still belongs to Illinois with five minutes to go in the half. Roy Williams going to come back with Felton and May with a four-point lead. With this much time, he's got to probably stay in that zone to keep Felton out of trouble. And look how coach, coach Bruce Weber counters. He brings back Augustine with two fouls on the floor. Much to rest Powell a little bit, who's been going hard, but you notice... He hasn't been as active on the boards when he had when he wasn't quite as tired. They have 20 on the shot clock. Felton is back on Williams. That really surprises me. And a that's, whistle first. That's going to be in manual again. That's three, and he's in foul trouble for the second straight game. Sean May taking it to Powell that time. Powell again. Just a huge size advantage on the break. And May, who had his dad's 1976 film of that ball game in his knapsack throughout this tournament and decided last night, mm -hmm. hey, guys, let's take a look at how my dad's team won a national championship. And he looked at it, and it gave him some inspiration for this game. Ingram at the line, one on one. He'll shoot one more. He's actually been carrying that around in his gym bag since Christmas Eve, waiting to show the team 
That's 76 Indiana championship when his father was the national player of the year. His father has been very clear about it since he arrived at Chapel Hill that this is Sean's time. I had my time. It's not my time. And he's tried to stay out of the way and just lend support to his son. Pass got away from Carolina, but out to Noel. David Noel in with Manuel on the bench. And Felton putting up some big shots. Has he ever improved in that department this year? Oh, without question, Jim. We're talking about a guy who shot in the low 30s from three, now in the mid 40s. Really improved his shot by tucking in that elbow a little bit and squaring up. Brown tried to counteract. Yep, he took that shot right over Felton. Who had to back off. Felton named the Bob Cousy Award winner today by the folks from the Naismith Memorial Hall of Fame. Well, Mr. Cousy gave Felton the award around 11 o'clock this morning. That's Scott from the corner, bouncing around twice and tipped out by Augustine. Bob Cousy, who had a chance, it was not a star, but played on that Holy Cross National Championship. And certainly quite an honor to get an award from a man who certainly was the prototype of point guards as we know it in modern basketball. And that uh, Hall of Fame gathering here in St. Louis, also with the official announcement of the 2005 class, Billy, and includes the last two men to win national championships in Jim Calhoun and Jim Beheim, as well as Coach Hubie Brown and Coach Sue Gunter also going into the Hall of Fame. Congratulations. Good fake back screen by Felton. Doesn't work out. Nice job by Ingram staying right with Williams. The P3. Jawad knocks it down. Jawad Williams in Carolina has its largest lead of the title game. Well, we said both of these teams shoot from a percentage standpoint about exactly the same for the three-point range, except Illinois takes so many more. There's that extra pass again. Boy, do they whip it around quickly. Still, Carolina's able to converge. Head will try the baseline move and unable to get it dropped. No well, no, no whistle. Powell the second time, no call. And the ball comes out to Felton. Illinois fans are livid. And it's five on four now because Powell was down on the floor. McCants thought about it. He'll drive in instead. And the floater rolls off. And that's off the ankle of Darren Williams. Marvin Williams so anxious to get rebounds that he just can't seem to grasp the ball when it's right in his hands. Carolina 52% from the field, leading by eight. Chip Nance along with Billy Packer, Roy Williams, really the focus of much attention. 40 total wins in the tournament without a championship. Eddie Sutton, then the great guy Lewis as well. Oh, McCants, this is the second time they beat him on the inbounds pass. Backs turned to the ball. You've got to be able to see ball and cutters. Second huge mistake in an out-of-bounds situation by Illinois in this half. Very unlike this ball club. Eight unanswered for Carolina to take the double-digit margin. And there you see, they're staying in this zone right now to protect Felton. It's been extremely effective, even against this outstanding shooting club. There's a bad errant pass. How have they done it, Billy? This well, is you, now twice. Yes, you can see that they have their back turned to the passer, and a good cut by McCants. North Carolina's had three separate long runs in this game. Now up 10. Coming up, singular at the half with Brett Gumbel, Clark Kellogg, Seth Davis. First half analysis, plus Dick Emberg will be along with an essay on why the free throw may not be so free after all. And the awarding of the singular Naismith Player of the Year. Coming up, singular at the half. Belton on the drive, kicks it back out. Noel seeing a lot of action with Manuel down with three fouls. McCants in the paint, tried to dish it, and Illinois read it. Good defense that time. McCants was going to go for the shot. It was taken away from him. Back to man to man. And if you're Illinois, you got to get the ball in Williams' hands and make him, make Felton have to handle him right here. That's the matchup, but Williams didn't put yep. it on the floor. Back out to Ingram. Here he goes. I'm surprised Williams isn't recognizing this. You've got to get the third foul on him when you have an opportunity like this in the first half. Eight seconds on the shot clock. It's Ingram. Nice three. release. And Luther Head able to run out, chase it down. They'll get a new 35. Jim, how, how many times do we say the long shots will be long rebounds? And there's a situation where Felton gets caught inside. He points to himself saying, my fault. Pretty good possession for Illinois that time, getting a second chance opportunity. And the basket by Darren Williams. 
The chance taking head down inside, wanting to post up. And look at D. Brown get the hands in there. May he traveled yes, first. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Some sloppy passing by North Carolina on the perimeter. Two in a row. He was the original rebel of rock and roll. Don't miss the movie event of the year. It's Elvis featuring over 20 original recordings by the king himself. It's coming to CBS this May. And I think a very good move by Roy Williams to get Felton on that bench, not picking up his third. He comes in with Scott. Also comes in with Sean Terry, number three. Williams trying to take advantage of that first series without Felton on the oh, floor. Oh, May walked again May and sure got by with like that he, one. Yep, looked like he backpedaled. McCants driving in, and again gets a soft roll around the rim. And a smart play by May, not going up there and touching that ball while it was on the cylinder. McCants has 11, and the lead back to 10. Is it McCants? Kind of amazing, Jim. He's had some huge games against top teams like Connecticut last year in beating the number one Connecticut club. Another offensive rebound. Oh, 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 from behind at Sean May. Cleaning it right out of the hands. McCants, big three. Terrific thinking by May. Instead of giving up the ball, he kept the dribble alive and forced Illinois to go back inside. You don't find many big men that think like that on the fast break. We've got a four-second differential here. Down 13. Only the second time they've been down by this many all season. Of course, Arizona was the other in the miracle comeback. I saw Joe Holiday doing his Rick Patino impersonation, stomping his foot on the floor. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you talked about on Saturday. The two on the shot clock. Head not in time. Not even an attempt. Uh, how about that? Terry comes off the bench and comes up with an excellent defensive play. An Illinois team that normally is thinking clearly didn't on that possession. Plenty of time here. You got Felton back in the ball game. And I think if with 3-9, good time to penetrate with Felton and kick out to McCants. And how about the fact with Augustine, Jim, and the foul problems early has had to be on that bench, I would say, for a good portion of this second half and not a factor in the game. Saw the number of times that uh, this, Illinois this, has trailed this season at halftime. This is very dangerous inbounds pass. Brown is so quick. There ought to be somebody back there setting the screen on Felton. The biggest deficit of the season at the half was six in the game against Purdue. And it's now double digits, and will North Carolina add to it? And, it? and Roy Williams sees that right away, brings May down court. What you want to do, because Brown is so fast, is never let him be one-on-one -on, -one on the inbounds pass. McCants now joins uh, May. And McCann, what McCants is doing is saying, guys, penetrate and kick it out to me because Head will have to make the decision does he stay with me or go to help on the dribble? You're going to watch. Felton's going to come flying off of May here and try to take this ball down the middle. Here he comes. Get There's the look. kick. McCants with another three. Oh, that almost. sure looked like he had the angle on it. That was a good idea, though, by North Carolina and almost got it to work. Pleased Roy Williams shaking his head. 40-27 North Carolina at halftime. Greg and company coming up with the singular at the half. CBS Sports exclusive coverage of the men's national championship game is sponsored by Mazda. Capital One. Miller. And by Allstate.